My name is Peter. I'm a graduate student worker at UCLA, and I'm a member of UAW 4811, and uh, also the grad uh, students for Justice in Palestine. And I've been active in um, the UC Divest Coalition and the encampments in the strike. I'm, I'm sure you've all heard about uh, what happened the uh, the night of April 30th. Uh, there was an attack by a mob of Zionists on the encampment at UCLA. Um, about 200 of them or so. Um, and that came really after an entire week of um, of escalation of uh, agitators uh, coming to the encampment and, and um, trying to get into physical confrontations. It also really uh, was encouraged by the university. They, um, they declared the encampment uh, unlawful only a few hours uh, before that attack. Um, and had spent weeks, uh, months actually, smearing the protests um, and uh, seized on uh, a couple of incidents that were spread on social media to uh, falsely claim that there was, you know, rife anti-Semitism and they used really um, vitriolic language against the uh, student protests. It was really an attempt to poison public opinion and isolate the, the student protests. Um, and... Uh, and so the university really was uh, implicit in bringing about this attack. They, they allowed this huge uh, jumbotron uh, sound equipment to be set up directly adjacent to the encampment um, and for a, a large counter protest to, to take place uh, right next to it. So um, and then, you know, the night of the attack, the uh, the police uh, were either stood down or at least, I mean, it took about four hours, I think, to respond. Um, so, you know, we've seen that when they want to be, the LAPD is quite capable of responding. Um, but on that particular night, it took them four hours. And there are reports that uh, the chancellor was actually on site and and watched uh, part of it uh, take place. So this is something that, uh, in my view, uh, the leadership of the university is uh, complicit in and also the city and state government um, who, uh, you know, had to call in the, uh, it, it's their choice to call in the California Highway Patrol. Um, and, uh, you know, then we had a strike of UAW 4811, which is the academic uh, student workers uh, union. And that was repressed again with police coming to the pic picket lines. Um, and uh, also a lot of private security that really, uh, turned the campus into a very militarized uh, environment and legal injunctions, um, which uh, finally, you know, the uh, a court order uh, restraining order was, was filed that uh, stopped the strike. Um, and uh, the university has also uh, gone a long way to repress free speech. Um, they've declared that the protests have to be confined to so-called free speech zones. Um, and uh, they just met to approve the purchase of millions of dollars in quote unquote less lethal uh, munitions for the university police, including pepper bullets, projectile launchers, and drones. Uh, some of the student conduct charges were dropped, but actually others are being pursued. Um, and, uh, and there's still criminal charges uh, pending and no, um, no prosecution of, of any of the attackers from the night of April 30th. Uh, there, there's been no action against them, uh, despite a lot of evidence about uh, individuals that were involved. Um, so uh, maybe I'll leave it there. The only other thing I would say is that there there's uh, some rank and file caucuses that have developed in the UAW over the last couple of years that had an active place in this uh, and I took an active uh, role in this. and um, you know, would be it would be important to try to link up uh, the different rank and file caucuses in the in different unions around this issue. My name is Christine Hong. I'm at UC Santa Cruz. Um, I um, am am the director of the Center for Racial Justice here. I also am part of Faculty for Justice in Palestine. Um, I am one of the co-chairs of the UC Ethnic Studies Faculty Council, and I wear a bunch of other hats as well. But before I speak about the UC People's Tribunal for Palestine, I just wanted to follow on what Peter was saying. Um, 
at Santa Cruz about a one month after what happened at UCLA, um, the UC Santa Cruz administration authorized a multi-agency police assault on um, our encampment. And I was among the over 120 people who were arrested that night. Um, it was a militarized police force. Uh, they were decked out in riot gear. And, um, you know, this, the administration actually, this is, there's no pretense of even honoring the idea of shared governance. We had a resolution in play and we had done a survey and published the results beforehand. And a vast majority of people on our campus on, at UC Santa Cruz of a Senate faculty um, indicated that they did not support the deployment of the police to shut down the encampment. And similar to at UCLA, our chancellor used and crafted a pretext. Um, and about a day or a day and a half before she deployed the police, she claimed that students in the encampment and supporters had um, blocked a key road and prevented an ambulance from um, having access to an infant that was, um, a sorry, a toddler who was having some kind of health crisis. And she wrote in a message and we knew that she was going to be deploying the police. She said, um, she said that let, death could happen in an instant in those kinds of situations. What she didn't mention was that it wasn't actually the students who were blocking access, the access, um, access to the ambulance, it was actually the police. And she was, um, the people who lived in the area around where that incident occur, occurred, they're in family student housing, they wrote in a petition calling on her to resign for lying and wielding that pretext as a way of deploying, you know, setting the narrative and setting the narrative to be able to justify the mass deployment of the police. We were also brutalized. Last night, I had dinner with some students who were, you know, at the our spring encampment, and one of them was so severely injured. They were thrown to the ground. They ended up having a stroke. They have neurological damage. They have cognitive issues. Um, they have difficulty recognizing people, remembering things. They had serious amnesia all summer long, and they were walking with a cane um, all summer long. And so um, I just wanted to mention this and also to say that um, the KUKFA, the, um, it's like the UC, um, uh, the Council of UC Faculty Associations, they put forward an unfair labor practice um, charge against the UC that draws from every single campus. And um, one thing that I want to mention is like what we did at Santa Cruz, our section, we focused on the use of a Reagan era when he was governor, when Ronald Reagan was governor, it was a part of the penal code. It's called 626.4. And what happened, this is this has been wielded. It's a time, place, manner restriction on the exercise of the First Amendment. And it's been used in poor interpretations of it to curb any kind of protest. And so our administration basically um, used the 626.4 to ban anyone. Like this is banning students in the most expensive area in the country, Santa Cruz, from being able to access their dorms. This is like a residential you know, campus, from being able to access food, from being able to attend courses. It basically damned the students who were arrested to failing their classes in spring. It um, prevented me from being able to develop to um, develop a course that I was supposed to teach over the summer and to access necessary res uh, resources. Um, so this is all part and parcel of an extraordinarily repressive university. 
And you could see this from the regents. The regents this past year have tried to flex their muscle and to exercise what they have um, formally as their right, but they normally have not exercised it, which is the direct ability to fire um, up to tenured faculty. And then also, they've also attempted to control any kind of speech act that is listed on a department website. You're not allowed to have anything that they deem to be opinion. So opinions are not allowed to stand. They have to be placed elsewhere, but it's all part of a kind of anti-Palestinian push by the regions. And the other thing, too, is they've tried to control the curriculum. And they've tried to state that when we are in our classrooms, we don't have the right to deviate from the uh, syllabus, but we have to teach exactly what is on there. And we cannot discuss what's happening in the world at large. So there's all these ways in which the university has become extraordinarily repressive. And I wanted to say that um, in the wake of all of this, um, a group of us led by the UC Ethnic Studies Faculty Council decided that we are going to put on um, a rolling UC People's Tribunal for Palestine. And we are charging Newsom, who is an, has ex officio regent status, the regents, and Michael Drake, the UC president, with complicity in genocide and complicity in the ongoing Nakba. And what we're doing is we're looking at different sort of areas. One is that this is a neoliberal, totally corporate university, and we're looking at investments. And so we're looking at the investments of the UC in the war industries. So one is looking at the UC's investments. The other one is thinking about the ways in which um, research within the UC is um, it's geared toward enormous world shattering violence, both here and around the globe. And so thinking about DOD funding, intelligence agency funding, Homeland Security funding of UC research. Um, the other thing too that we're looking at is the ways in which donor dollars, and I think that this is also really interesting because a lot of the donors to the UC actually profited off um, corporate real estate. And so they have driven up the prices of housing and rent in almost every single, like wherever any UC campus is located. And then they donate to the university and the university views these donors as what they call university business. And if you do anything to disrupt donor dollar flow, including by agitating around Palestine in the instance when there are Zionist donors like Helen Diller, the Helen Diller Foundation, um, then you have hell to pay. And so, um, you know, one is to sort of call out the UC for its accountability, not to the people of California, but to these deep pocketed donors that may like fund a cancer hospital, but simultaneously fund um, these Zionist organizations that attack students and faculty at the UC. And also the funding of, they also fund um, endowed chairs in Israeli studies that have people who served in the IDF and the IOF. Um, and then last but not least, focusing both on what's happening over in Palestine and in Lebanon, but also focusing on um, campus repression and looking at um, the multiple forms of campus re repression, including police violence. And so um, that's something that we're undertaking. And that is where um, labor within the UC stands to play a really um, key role. I always say that the only group that despises the regents more than the UC Ethnic Studies Faculty Council um, is AFSCME, you know, and um, we definitely could use um, the solidarity of both rank and file as well as unions um, in 
the mounting of this UC People Tribunal. So we are, we're going to have the first session at um it's going to be it's going to coincide with the regents meeting at UCSF in November, but we're going to have one that focuses on health and healthcare because of UCSF. And then we hope to have another one down at UCLA, and that one will focus on investments and um, uh, repression, including police repression. And we may have a third session, but yeah, I welcome any of your questions and um, yeah. Yes, there were actually three encampments um, and uh, there were arrests made at all three of them, um, but uh, Yes, and I, I mean, I expect the protest movement is, isn't, uh, isn't over. You know, the regents are trying to state that you can't even wear a mask at the UC. <laughs> They're saying that, like, you can, you're not even allowed to wear a mask. You know, COVID is not a thing of the past. But there, th there's an entire host of restrictions that are in place that um, are aimed to um criminalize any kind of protest activity including the erection of encampments including wearing a mask let's say that you have a health condition um there's so many things that well, there's a um there was a motion in the california federation of labor um and uh in solidarity with the 4811 strike and against the repression that the students faced so i think um I think that provides a basis for uh, pushing for action uh, in the unions for, you know, for the unions to take a, a strong public position. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, you know, I, I think the, the bigger question maybe is, is um, how can, um, how can we push for, how can the how can the students help the labor movement accomplish, um, you know, uh, pushing pushing the pushing union policy to the left, and uh, taking real substantive actions to, like like the actions taken by the uh, ILWU um, against uh, apartheid in South Africa, um, that would actually disrupt our uh, flow of arms to um, the Israeli state. So, and students, I think that would galvanize the student movement. It would be, you know, major participants in.